Okay, let's talk about finding the volume of a sphere. And we're going to use this particular sphere, this example problem, to um, teach these concepts. But, um, you know, a sphere, which obviously is a circle, it's a ball, right? It's not just a circle uh, or a ball. It's, well, yeah, we want to think of it as a ball, right? Something like a bowling ball or a basketball. That's uh, the concept of a sphere if you weren't uh, already familiar with what a sphere is. But uh, I'm gonna go ahead and um, obviously uh, show you how to solve this problem. And we're gonna look at this problem in another way. Uh, we're gonna uh, basically rearrange the information in this problem to make it a little bit more challenging. So you wanna stick around here um, if you're studying uh, area, surface area, and volume of basic figures because what I'm gonna be talking about uh, goes beyond just the volume of a sphere. But obviously we're going to solve this problem in just a second. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need help learning math, well, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so let's get into the volume of a sphere. So we talked about this. This would be like a basketball you know, any kind of ball that we can kind of hold in our hand, right? So we're talking about volume, but we want to make sure that we don't confuse area and surface area, okay, and volume, okay? So if you're studying um, or interested in how to find the volume of a sphere, okay, you might also be interested in finding the surface area of a sphere or the area of a circle, okay? These are different. These are, uh, each one of these requires a different formula, right? And this is the same as, let's say, the area of a rectangle or the surface area of, uh, let's say, a box, like a shoe box, okay? Or a the volume of a shoe box, okay? So the concepts are different. Remember, volume, we're going to, uh, the units of measure, this is very important, or it's going to be in units cubed, okay? And surface area and area, it's going to be in units squared. So um, if you watch some of my other videos on area and surface area and volume, I stress this because uh, students just think it's, well, it's a little trivial that, you know, I don't really have to pay attention to the units of measure. Yes, you absolutely have to, okay? Another thing you have to be very careful with is all these formulas. Okay, we, we, there's so many formulas for area, surface area, and volume of basic figures. So we have circles, we have uh, little cube things, we can have cylinders, okay? So surface area of a cylinder, that uh, formula is different than the volume of cylinder, okay? Uh, we can have triangles, we can have uh, pyramids, okay? You gotta get the idea. So when you start adding up all these different formulas, it can get confusing. Right? And just over the years, you know, uh, we're going to be focusing on a volume of sphere, but sometimes a student will break out of different formula and they'll, you know, uh, get confused. So don't use your memory uh, right now in terms of, um, oh, I think this is the right formula to do this particular problem. No, reference your what? Your notes, okay? Because I know you have outstanding fantastic notes so you can just reference. That's the whole idea of taking notes, right? You want to look, make sure you got the right formula for the right situation, understand what you're trying to do, and then work the problem, okay? All right, so let's get into this problem here. All right, so here we go. This is uh, our sphere, and you can see it has a radius of three inches, and we're trying to find the volume, and this is the formula we need to use. So the volume of sphere is equal to four-thirds times pi times the radius cubed, all right? So you need to know the formula. If you don't know the formula, we won't be able to do the problem, okay? So that's number one. Number two is we need to uh, correctly apply the formula. So here it's pretty direct, right? Our radius is three inches uh, in this particular sphere, so we're just gonna plug in right here for the formula, three, okay, for our radius. So uh, we'll go ahead and just simplify this. So the volume is gonna be four-thirds times pi, times um, three cubed. Now, one thing that, of course, three cubed is 27, right? So that's the correct answer, but I've seen this over and over again. So let's say I have two times three cubed, 
Okay, and, I, and if you watch my other videos, I say the importance of when you're replacing a variable with a value to put that in parentheses because I've seen students do this so many times. So let's say I'm trying to calculate two times three cubed. I've seen students go two times three is six and then I'll take that and I'll cube it. Wrong, wrong, wrong. Okay, that says follow the proper order of operations. So remember, follow your basic math here. You gotta do powers before you do multiplication. So we've got three cubed is three times three, 13, three times three times three, that's 27. Okay, so we're just walking through this problem. So 27 times pi, uh, we can approximate that as 3.14. Um, I'll talk about that in a second. Times four thirds, so three goes into 27. Uh, just a little cross cancellation, that's nine. So that's four times pi times nine. And then of course, four times nine is gonna be 36. So 36 pi, okay is our number here but 36 pi what well our units of measure is inches so it's inches cubed so this here would be considered an exact answer okay anytime you use the pi symbol okay and we don't replace that with the decimal estimate we would consider this an exact answer so if your teacher is saying find the exact volume this would be the exact uh, volume now, we could just say, hmm, let's kind of give uh, more of a feel for this answer, and let's uh, replace this pi uh, with the estimate of 3.14. Okay, of course, this goes on and on and on. The more digits we use, the more accurate our answer will be. So 36 pi is approximately, notice these little symbols, they're not just kind of like, you know, you know, I'm just not kind of writing things down that don't mean something. Everything in math means something. Notice... This is equal to, this is approximately. These little squiggly lines like this means approximately. So 36 pi is approximately 113.04 okay, inches cubed, right? All right, so that's uh, the volume of this uh, particular sphere. And that uh, takes care of this problem. But let's say our problem was this. This becomes more interesting. Now, what if I kind of turn this around? Now, same information okay this is our same sphere we already know that the volume is 113.04 inches cubed so hmm, let's go like hey this is the same problem and remember this problem the radius was equal to three okay so what if i phrase the problem this way okay i so said i have a sphere and its volume is 113.04 inches cubed what is the radius hmm, how do we do this well of course, you're going to have to use the formula, and you're going to have to be really good with your algebra. So let's go ahead and take a look at an example problem like so. All right, so the volume we know is 113.04 inches cubed, so I'm going to put replace this V with the, with the volume. So I have 113.04 is equal to 4 thirds pi r cubed. Remember, I'm trying to solve for r, okay? That's an unknown. I don't have that information. That's what I'm trying to solve for. So now, best way to handle a, uh, an equation like this is to get rid of this denominator. I want to deal with fractions. So if I multiply the entire equation by 3, I can get rid of that uh, little fraction there. So that would be 3 times 113, uh, 113.04. That gives me 339.12. Right? I'm just distributing here. 3 times 4 thirds. Okay, the threes cross cancel, that leaves me with four times pi r cubed. Okay, so that's just an easier way to write this problem. So now I've got to solve for r cubed. Uh, so how do I do that? Well, I need to divide both sides of the equation by this four pi, okay? So that's what I'm doing right here. So r cubed will be equal to 113, uh, I'm sorry, 339 0.12 divided by 4 pi, okay? Now, pi, again, it's an exact uh, value. So let's go ahead and, and uh, use uh, an estimate for pi, 3.14. So this is 339.12 divided by 4 times 3.14. And when we do this math, we get 27, okay? Wow, that's pretty cool. So when you go into your calculator, you'll get uh, 27. So r cubed, we did all this number crunching, turns out to be equal to 27, okay? So r cubed, that's our radius cubed, is equal to 27. Now, here, 
uh, when you're faced with a, uh, uh, you don't have a square root like this. If I had r squared is equal to 27, I could just simply take uh, and take the square root of both sides. So r would be equal to the square root of 27. But I have a cubic situation here. Okay, so you have to know a little bit more about rational exponents uh, or these type of things. Okay, but this is let's just make this problem easy on ourselves. Hopefully, you're just like, oh, 27. That's the same as uh, three cubed. So these here have the same exponents, so r must be equal to 3, okay? And that, in fact, was what our original problem was. We already knew that to be the case because this is the same problem in reverse, okay? So when you're dealing with volume of sphere problems, you can kind of get both varieties, okay? You can be uh, given the volume, and then they might be asking for the radius, or they might give you the volume and they might ask for the surface area. So you still have to get the radius and do some other calculations. All kinds of crazy good stuff. I tell you, math is just so much fun. There's just so much you can do with all these formulas and all these concepts. But um, anyways, again, if you don't have your notes and all these formulas organized, then you're going to just be very, very confused. All right. So uh, got to take great math notes and you got to practice this stuff. Just watching me do math is not enough. It's watching math is not the same as learning math and retaining math. Okay, got to practice this stuff. Okay, so if in some ways this video helped you out, I would certainly appreciate you smashing that like button. If you're new to my YouTube channel, hopefully you'll consider subscribing. Um, been on YouTube for a long time, over 10 years at the point of this video. I already have hundreds and hundreds of math videos. Uh, organized on my uh, channel in various playlists, pre-algebra, algebra one, uh, more advanced math, etc. So all those videos are there for you, and I'm producing uh, videos all the time. Okay, but if you really want to check out my best resources, just follow the links in the description of this video. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.